collab bro. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well. I wanted to make this video on a few remote collaboration tips that have helped me in the past and also include some mistakes I've made along the way so you can avoid repeating mine. This video is in collaboration with Boombox who have very kindly gifted me their premium subscription for a year so I have been trialing them out and I will be demonstrating some of these tips on their platform but of course you can apply them to any workflow you currently have. Anyway I'm gonna keep it short and sweet so let's get into this video. The first tip is keep your objectives and deliverables clear from the start. The best remote collaborations are created when everyone knows what they need to do in the project, what are the objectives of the project, what they need to deliver and when. When you are setting out to collaborate with somebody else, be clear on exactly the vision that you have for the project. Yes, it might change along the way once you actually see it come to fruition, but at least you will be that much closer to the end goal if you're clear from the start and you can avoid having too many revisions along the way. Make sure you delegate effectively across your team and so that everyone knows which tasks they're responsible for so you can avoid duplicates or missed tasks. So for example in Boombox I can just create a task, I can assign it to different members of my team or different collaborators and I can also see what tasks are currently in progress and which have been completed. Using a workflow like that just helps to keep everyone accountable and on track with what they need to do. Using calendar and deadlines is a great idea because if you give yourself 10 years to finish a song you will take 10 years to finish it. If you set more targets and deadlines then you can actually make sure that you will release that song sometime soon and not just keep saying big things coming soon for the next two years which I've definitely done. It's an urban legend that never happened. This is something that I'm still trying to optimize for myself, but when you're setting deadlines, make sure they are achievable, that you allow plenty of time for revisions or any errors. Things happen all the time. Your door crashes, videos get corrupted, whatever. You need to allow some time for things like that to happen and still be able to deliver on your project. I'm still trying to find a balance with that myself so that I don't stretch myself too thin. But one thing I've started to do is actually track how long certain tasks take me, for example. How long do I take to mix a song or create a long form video or a batch of reels, for example. Obviously, these will vary slightly, but at least you can estimate and then allow some extra time. While you might be working with your friends and people that you know, you never know what's gonna happen later on down the line and you want to make sure that your contributions are protected and that you are credited and remunerated properly through royalties. So one thing that I've discovered on Boombox while trying out their platform is that you can actually easily create song splits and also generate legally binding contracts. As someone with no legal background myself, where I have to constantly read my contracts at length or put them together myself and make sure that I cover all bases, I think this is a great feature of the platform. And irrespective of that, contracts and royalty splits are really important to have in place to make sure that everyone's rights and contributions are protected. Throughout the project, there might be adjustments that you need to make. Maybe you need some extra time. Maybe something has happened. Maybe you you need some revisions. So my tip number two is communication is key. Even though collaborating remotely opens so many great opportunities for you to reach talent that wouldn't you wouldn't find maybe in your local town, but it also poses some challenges because if you're in the room with that person, you might communicate a bit more effectively. You can show them what you mean. You might pick up on certain social cues that might be lost through an email or a tone with which they are speaking. So the way that you communicate throughout your collaboration will be hugely important. Find your preferred way of staying in touch. I tend to be quite flexible with different people depending on what works for different projects or maybe the messaging apps or anything like that that they use internally. But this could be emails, could be voice messages, it could be phone calls. Some people prefer to just get you on the phone. And sometimes it might simply be a messaging app, but I find that keeping those channels separate and work focused really helps to keep me on track, especially when I work with my friends, for example, where we can easily just dive into a really friendly conversation. And that's obviously completely fine. But I find that if that is happening on another platform, then we can keep work separate from friendship. And that's actually really helpful for me personally. So within Boombox, you can also message each other and keep that that whole project related conversation on the platform. So regardless of which communication platform you use, make sure that you communicate things like deadlines, 
Uh, if you are struggling with any brief or the objectives or you need to clarify certain things, it's always best to ask and stay in touch and not ghost people. <laughs> Everyone will always prefer if you just ask and clarify things rather than having to start things from scratch. And also if you need any adjustments or if you uh, need to delay the deadline, do communicate that rather than just ghosting the person. That way they know what you're up to and most of the time people can be quite flexible and understanding. But it's going to set quite a bad price precedent if you just don't message them back for weeks <laughs> rather than telling them. So another reason why communication is so important is for giving and receiving feedback. This is my final point and I think it's so important and sometimes can cause some friction which is why it's so crucial that you get it down in your remote collaborations. So when it comes to giving feedback I always assume that the person has approached it with their best intentions and that they have followed the brief as clearly and as well as they understand so there's no need to get upset when something does doesn't look how you expected it to. What I usually do is give clear and concise feedback. I'll also make it actionable. So giving people tools that they can benefit from when they're doing revisions. So for example, if there's maybe certain B-roll I want included in the video, I'll provide the links. I'll make comments on exactly what I want, or I might just give references and that kind of thing. So that's really helpful. And then for myself, I will usually look at how I am creating briefs in the future to make sure I'm as clear as possible as well with my information. But it's also important to figure out the point of view that the other person is coming from so that you can both kind of work towards that common goal. And then for myself, when I am receiving feedback, it is important that I understand it as well as possible from the client's or the collaborator's point of view and action it as well as possible. So sometimes I might be sending them a couple of different versions based on that feedback just to gauge a bit more clearly what they meant and I think that can be really helpful because it's what I would do if they were in the room next to me for example if we were trying out different effects I'd, I'd say oh, I've got this or we can try this option which one do you prefer and it's important to keep in mind that revisions pretty much always happen I've had very few projects which I can probably count on one hand that didn't need any revisions so this is a normal part of the process and it's important to remember that you're working towards that common goal and it's not a personal kind of attack on you it's just someone communicating their perspective these things are absolutely normal and I find that when people are describing sounds we all have very subjective views on what we meant or what certain descriptors mean so that's why it's so important to be really clear on it of course when you're sending files uh, you want to get detailed feedback either through a voice note message or a phone call but what I like about the platform I'm trying out boombox is that when you send your client those tracks they can just punch in at different points of the track and they can also send you voice notes. So sometimes it's easier to just describe what you meant rather than trying to type it out and it gives you both options and I think that's really helpful. Also when you're sending different files to your clients you can include the previous versions as well so they can easily just compare the two and see whether what they requested has been achieved. Plus you need to be able to delegate your tasks and in Boombox I can assign different access levels to different people based on their role in the project. So that's it for today. Don't forget to check out Boombox. The link is in description and I have also linked my artist profile if you want to connect with me on there. You can sign up completely free. You get four gigabytes of free storage when when you sign up and then you can upgrade to more premium features and more storage and you can also earn more storage by inviting your friends and when they sign up you can get some extra storage added to your account. You can also create your own unique artist profile, showcase your portfolio, your personality, link all your socials and join their artist network which I think is a great way to find online collaborators. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. In August, I'm going to be doing more creator focused videos. So it's going to be around content creation and building your online presence. So if there's anything that you want me to cover in August, drop a comment down below. I'm still getting back into making music regularly. And so I wanted to just wait until I start to do more sound design or mixing focused videos again and just focus on and a content creation, which is something I've been consistently doing for the past two years. So thank you again for watching and I will see you on the next video.